Hello and welcome back. Today we have another fun process video. I'm going to be sharing with you how to create these cute little weathered winter birdhouses and give you some ideas on how to decorate them. These are a lot of fun and they are absolutely adorable. So let's get right into it. For this, I'm going to be using the W plus nine birdhouse die. Now this is a generously sized die. The birdhouse when assembled is perfect for taking a full focal point on an A2 card. You've got your little eaves there, your roof. Uh, we've got the body of the birdhouse there, the little hole for the bird to go into. You've got this little trim piece that can either go at the bottom or it can be used as a little post. And then we've also got a little basket in here that you can fill with florals. Now, I don't need this entire um, birdhouse for this particular project. But the great thing about this is it's very versatile. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut it a little bit shorter, about right here. I don't need all of it. So I'm going to lay it out on my um, wood grain cardstock. This is the Tim Holtz Distress wood grain cardstock. I'm going to cut it about right here. So I'm going to go ahead and run this through my die cut machine. All right, so now we've got this cute little mini birdhouse. And this cardstock has this beautiful wood grain texture to it, but it's kind of difficult to see right now. We're going to create that whitewashed look first. And this is going to bring out that wood grain as well. I've got a little bit of pumice stone distress oxide, surprise, surprise, and my brayer. And I'm going to just ink that up and then run that over the top of this, this die cut. Now what that's going to do is the ink is going to hit all of the high points, deposit ink, and it's going to bring out that wood grain so we can see it a little better. Now I want to add just a little variation in color here. So I'm going to grab some hickory smoke distress oxide and we're going to do the same thing. Except this time I'm not going to use quite as much. The hickory smoke is quite a bit darker than the pumice stone so we don't want to cover up all the pumice stone. I'm just going to hit this one a little bit along some of the edges and let it just lightly skim over the top of that paper. When I'm done I'm just going to run my brayer over a damp um, paper towel to clean it. Now currently all that ink is just sitting on the high points of the paper so what I like to do is just take a damp paintbrush and just kind of go over some of the areas to spread out that ink and make the ink oxidize since we are using the oxides and this is just going to again give me even more variation in color and then of course nothing gets away without me adding a few splatters to it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of addicted to splattering. It's my thing. I mean, hey, it's easy, it's quick, and it adds interest. So it's a no fuss, no think way to add a little interest. I'm not going to judge you. You don't judge me, okay? All right, so we're going to go ahead and dry this. And that pretty much finishes the base for the white washed one. So now we're going to go ahead and do the dark weathered wood one. Okay, I've gone ahead and cut another birdhouse. And this time we need to create an all over base color and we want that color to get into the grooves of that wood grain paper. So I'm smushing out some distress oxides in ground espresso and gathered twigs onto my craft mat here. I'm adding some water so that it's a little fluid. And then I'm gonna start dipping this into that ink. I'm gonna add more water here and there as needed. Because again, I want that ink to settle into the grooves of that wood grain and create that good base layer. I've chosen to do the weathered wood and the ground espresso, but again, you can choose whatever colors you would like. I wanted that warm base because I'm going to come in with some deeper colors and I'm even going to add in some iced spruce and things like that here in a minute. But I wanted that warmth as my base color. I'm going to dry in between each layer, and then I'm just going to start picking up some more. Again, the more modeled that you can get that base color, the better, because then you have to do less work later on, and it will give you the most interest. Remember, if wood's been sitting outside and getting all weathered, it's going to have a lot of different tones in it, some grays and some blues and greens and browns and blacks. So that's kind of what we're going for here. Okay, so now that our base color is down, we're going to start layering on darker colors. I've got that Distress Oxide and Ground Espresso again, and we're going to use our brayer this time 
to brayer over the high points. We're going to get some good skippity bits and um, we're not coloring the whole thing. Again, don't want to cover up everything, but we do want to add a layer of dark over that. So here you can see where we're at. This is looking beautiful so far, but we now need to add some aging to those cracks and crevices in the grain. And the Distress Crayons are perfect for this. They are nice and soft and you can scribble directly on the project. So it's great for getting into those grooves. I'm just going directly to the paper and um, just rubbing that in with my finger. I'm following the grain on the cardstock here and I'm paying special attention to, there's actually some knots in the grain. I'm paying special attention to that and I'm following the direction of the grain so that I get the darker marks deep down in that grain. Again, this is personal preference. You can use whichever colors you want. Here I started with the gathered twigs. And then like I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna add in some iced spruce. I really like adding the greens into um, weathered wood. It just, you know, wood just takes on some of that green appearance sometimes. And I think that this does a really good job of giving that weathered look. And then I'm going to follow up with the ground espresso again, and I'm going to work that mainly into the knots and then some other areas just to create those deeper recesses. And if this worn weathered wood is something you would use a lot of, you could always do a full sheet of this at once, and then you have more to use on other projects. So there's where we're at so far. And my final step, we're going to add a little bit of black soot to this. We need, we've, we're all browns right now. We just need one level deeper. And for that, I'm going to pull out the Distress Ink in black soot. And again, we're going to use that brayer. We're just going to brayer some black soot lightly over the top of some areas. Again, not the whole thing, just here and there. But the addition of just that little bit of black really does make a big difference. Okay, so let's cut the rest of our pieces and put our houses together. I'm going to start with the roof, and since I have two, instead of cutting them separately and then deepening them, I'm going to go ahead and do this whole panel. This one's close, but not quite as dark, quite as dark as I would like it, so we're going to deepen that up. I've put down some black soot distress ink and a little ground espresso oxide, I'm spraying the water, and then we're just going to dip our panel into that. I'm going to dry in between each layer and keep dipping until I get it to the intensity that I want. Now you could just do this in all black and all brown, whatever color you want your roof to be. Um, I just like the interest of the black and the brown. Once that's dry, we're going to go ahead and do our die cutting. And while we're at it, we're going to die cut the rest of our pieces as well. And I'll have everything featured linked in the video description below. Uh, if you see something that you love now would be a great time to pick it up. Uh, we are having a Black Friday sale. It's 30% off the entire store Friday through Monday. So make sure that you stop by if there's anything that you've had your eye on. The birds that we're using today are from Honeybee Stamps and they are um, also having a great Black Friday sale. I believe it is 20% off the entire store Friday and then buy one, get one half off on their dies on Saturday. So again, I'll have all of that linked below in the video description. And then um, I'll have links to some of my other favorite places that are having Black Friday sales as well if you wanted to check those out. I always also include a link to our blog which there's always a blog post associated with each of these videos where I have a complete supply list. So if there's ever anything in one of these videos, tools wise, adhesive, any of that stuff, all of that's always linked in the blog post. So if you're curious about any of those things, make sure that you're clicking through to the blog. You'll also find still photos of all of the projects as well. Okay, so back to the project. What I'm doing here, this is an optional step. You could cut this separately and then just layer it on top, but what I like to do is cut it from the house and then drop it back in. This would be the hole in the house that the bird would come in and out of, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about here in just a second. But I just wanted to point out that this part is optional. With all of our pieces cut out, it's now time to just assemble our houses. And this is very easy, it's not a ton of parts, so I like to double stack the trim piece here around the opening 
And then this post that we've cut, I am gonna double stack that as well, just so that it has a little more stability. And if this house has been sitting outside, he's not gonna have some stark white trim, so I'm just going to add a little bit of distressing to our trim pieces here that we cut from white with a little bit of pumice stone. And that's just going to make it not look so clean. Again, I'm not going overboard here, just a little bit of distressing. Now for that portion that we're going to drop back in, we it, it would be recessed, so we need it to be darker. It can't be the same color, so I'm going to take a little black soot and just darken that up using a sponge dauber. This part would be in shadow, so it should be just a little bit darker. And then we're going to continue adhering. Now I've cut another base for the birdhouse here and that's what we're again I need a little bit more stability so I'm going to adhere this front panel to the base and I will just trim off the unwanted portion after we've assembled the entire house the roof goes right on top of the trim and I like to use liquid adhesive for this because it does give you that little bit of time that little bit of wiggle room and then we'll just adhere our trim around the little opening there and then we will drop that center back in just like a puzzle piece. You can see I'm using my tweezers to just work that in and make sure that it is completely dropped in. And now we'll just adhere that roof. Oh my goodness, it's so cute. I love making these birdhouses. They're just absolutely adorable. I have a thing for birds in general, in case you couldn't tell. <laughs> I have ours. I have the honeybee ones. I just bought a couple from Spellbinders. If there is a bird, I'm buying it, seriously. So I'm just trimming off those extra portions. And speaking of birds, we need to make a little bird to go on this house. And this is the Honeybee Stamps Winter Birds Lovely Layers Die. This whole series is just one of my favorites, absolute favorites hands down. They're so cute. So this one has a chickadee and a cardinal in it. And um, we're going to, we're used both in our cards today, but I'm demonstrating the cardinal. And I've created a red panel the same way I created the uh, black panel for the roof. I created several others in green, blue, and red. Uh, just to cut all of our pieces from for all of our um, greenery, our berries, our bird. And for the reds, we used uh, festive berries, aged mahogany distress ink, and candied apple oxide ink. Now I've assembled this bird and I'm finishing off the edges with a little bit of festive berries and then just the littlest bit of black soot. And then to soften that, I will come back in with a dauber with a little bit of the festive berries on it just to, um, just to knock that black back a little bit. For the black part of his face, I'm going to use that same panel that we used on the roof. And if you're doing his feet, you can also do the feet from that panel, but ours will be behind the birdhouse, so it won't be seen, so there's no reason to include them. Okay, so for the beak, we're just going to go ahead and use that red piece that we cut. Just find a light spot on there, and then we can just add a little spiced marmalade to it, make it orange. Cardinal has an orange beak, so no reason to uh, make a whole new panel, unless you already have an orange panel. But here we can take that red and then just add some of that spiced marmalade over top, and we've got a nice, cute little orange beak. Now ultimately, he's going to be perched up on the uh, roof of the birdhouse here, but before we assemble, let's go ahead and decorate our birdhouse. Now for this, I went ahead and dug through my stash of dies and pulled out things that I think would work. I'm looking for the smaller elements. I pulled a mix of Spellbinders W plus 9 and Honeybee stamps, and we're going to start building this. Now you don't necessarily need Christmas um, stamps or stamps Christmas dies for this you can use some of your everyday florals just make sure that they're a mix of small and large and I like to work from the bottom up I've cut all of these from those panels that I created and I'm going to just kind of start messing around with a basic arrangement here I will cut and tear pieces down as necessary to make them smaller to fit in um, areas but like I said I work from the bottom up I usually put the bigger or longer elements on the bottom, and then I just start working in layers. 
Now, before I start adhering too much of this, I do want to add some snow to my elements. That's a great way to Christmas or winterize uh, some of your everyday dyes. Add a little sprinkling of snow to them and they instantly become winter. So I'm using the Wow Puff White Powder and I've used some Versamark. I just dipped that into the pad. You can see there, sprinkle some of that powder on and then melt that with my heat tool. This puffs up and looks like fallen snow. I use this on almost every winter project. I don't worry about being too specific with where it goes. Like I said here, I'm just pushing it into the pad. Once I sprinkle the powder on, if I have too much, I can just use my finger to brush off some of it and make it look a little more organic. Don't wanna cover the whole die cut. Now, alternately, if you have an embossing pen, you could use that to um, apply your powder. So here I've got a Distress embossing pen, and I'll just use that to apply the Versamark to certain areas, or the embossing, the embossing uh, ink as it is. And then again, just melt that. So I've just picked some elements to add that little bit of snow to, and this is, like I said, gonna further winterize the arrangement. And like I've mentioned, I will have all of the specific dyes I used linked in the description below. So if there's something that you're looking for, just uh, click down there and you'll be able to find what I used. Now this is not the final arrangement. Uh, I'm actually recreating the one that we did, but I wanted to give you a process view of putting together this little arrangement and how I kind of go through it. We will go over the entire finished product at the end and I'll point out what specific things are and any changes that I had made. Look for places that you can tuck in these smaller flowers and berries. Um, for dimension, I do like to tuck some of them up under some of the pine so that only a little bit is peeking out. It just keeps them from looking like everything is pasted on top. And don't forget to shape some of your pieces with your fingers and add a little movement before you glue them down. Now there's usually two different ways that I like to finish these off, um, and I usually choose one or the other. They are our wet mediums. So either your paste or your glossy accents and things like that, you'll wanna do those last because they'll need to dry. On this one, I'm going to add some snow by using a little bit of glossy accents, and then we're gonna cover that in Distress Rock Candy Glitter. This is a fun way, it just adds a clear base with all of that glittery goodness, and the, like I said, the glossy accents dries completely clear, so it just leaves behind these clumps of that glitter, and this is a fun way to add a little extra sparkle. That glitter will just stick everywhere that we applied that glossy accents and again once it dries it will be crystal clear and you'll just be left with that glitter mm, so cute all right so let's take a look at the finished projects y'all look at these how beautiful did these turn out I created these little tag cards so this is the one that we demonstrated in the video I used the whitewashed birdhouse and perched the cardinal up on the roof I added lots of glitter to this one as our quote unquote snow. And I absolutely love red and white and gray for Christmas. And this one, I went all out with those decorations on the rooftop. So you can see here, I've got that under the mistletoe, some flowers from our holly jolly dye tucked up under there. You can see here some more of that uh, holly, two different types of holly. Don't be afraid to mix styles. It looks great. Stuck some berries in there, a little bit of that snow. I added some twine bow underneath. And here we've got those little metallic berry-like things. This comes from the Spellbinders die. It's the one with the mailbox. I used our modern numerals to put the 25 up there. And in the background, I used a stencil from Honeybee Stamps with some texture paste and just stenciled right through that. Oh, I love 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 how this turned out again that red and white and gray one of my favorite christmas combos for the mat on this one i used a little honeybee stamps uh, pattern paper and then i like i said turned these into kind of like a tag card combos i just added some twine through the top 
hooked some little jingle bells, and now you can write a personal message in there, hang this on the tree, hang it on a wine bottle, hang it on a gift, whichever you want. Just super, super pretty. Okay, so for the second one, I decided to go a little bit more rustic, and this one has the dark birdhouse. So there's a lot of focus pulled to the birdhouse, and I chose to keep the decorations a little more simple because it was so bold already and chose to do a little bit busier background. It's still faint, but it's definitely got a little more um, color going on in the background. Here you can see I used some paper paste from Finnebear to add the snow. I did this at the very end, the same as I would have done the glossy accents because it's gonna need time to dry. You can see back here there's accents of vellum with some music heat embossed on it. I finished it off the same way with uh, the jingle bells because who doesn't love jingle bells? <laughs> but I absolutely love this one as well. I have a hard time picking a favorite. I love the homespun rustic look of this one, but again, that clean red and white gets me every time. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'd love to know which one is your favorite and if you picked up any tips along the way. I also wanted to thank you guys for leaving such wonderful comments. I really appreciate it when you guys give me feedback, so keep that up. Um, it lets me know what you wanna see more of. Don't forget, there's also a ton of Black Friday sales, so if you are looking to pick up something new, now would be a great time to take advantage of those sales. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.